What's up guys, good morning. Um, woods are just starting to wake up. Just wanna do a little video here about um, about cordage and uh, kind of uh, some thoughts on cordage. Um, now, uh, when you're making cordage, whether you're using natural or uh, plant or animal cordage, uh, some of your considerations are, uh, I'd say primarily your consideration is, what is that cordage gonna be used for? Like what kind of tensile strength are you looking for in that cordage? And that kind of drives your thought process into what material uh, to choose. Uh, I think about uh, uh, kind of two different categories. Uh, one being tensile strength as in, uh, you know, a bowstring. I've made many bowstrings out of natural material and uh, that's under a tremendous load uh, as it's pulling, um, you know, as you're, as you're pulling that, that bow back to fire that arrow. Um, the second would be, say you're making a primitive bowstring for a uh, bow drill fire, although under, not under near as much tension as in a bow and arrow, uh, there's a lot of friction involved there. So uh, the heat that that natural cordage is able to absorb and still remain intact through the, uh, through the operation of the bow drill fire is pretty important. So um, what I have here today is just some, uh, just some leaves uh, that my wife cut off of one of her ornamental plants and she was going to toss these out and of course I grabbed them um, to use them for a uh, quick cordage deal. Alright, so uh, with any natural cordage you, know, you can use them in two ways. Um, you can use them dry or you can use them wet and then there's the combination of harvesting dry and then redding and uh, or soaking that uh, that cordage material in water to uh, break it down and make it easier to twist uh, at which time that you'd have to stretch it till it was dry because uh, uh, as you uh, if you work a natural uh, plant-based cordage that's wet when you harvest it say uh, yucca or uh, wisteria something like that it's a live plant as you harvest it and then make your cordage you're going to want to stretch that till it's dry so that it can uh, dry and shrink and lock in uh, the uh, reverse two-ply twist that you use to create that cordage okay so what i'm going to do with these leaves is it's got a real kind of stiff end down here so we'll just take our take our knife here and we're just going to cut that off all right then i'm going to process this cordage down into um smaller strips and i'm not really concerned about how long the strips are because i have a lot of material here and i can splice and make this uh, cordage as long as i want all right but I do want them thin, and that's just going to make them easier for me to twist, especially because this is dry. Now, I could soak this. I could break this down and then soak this in water. Um, that, again, would make it easier to twist. Uh, but I don't want to break this cordage down too far because then um, it's already pretty... I mean, it's, it's strong, but it could be uh, relatively fragile after I soak it. And then I'd have to wait for it to dry. And so I'm just going to work this, uh, work this cordage dry. So I've got this cordage kind of broke down and I'm just going to twist this. I'm going to roll this cordage. I'm blocking with this hand. I'm rolling with my right hand until I get a nice loop here. All right, once I get that loop, I'm going to pinch that loop. I'm going to continue to twist this one away from myself. And then I'm going to come through. I'm going to trap that one underneath and I'm going to roll that back towards. And I'm going to replicate that. Roll away, trap, roll towards. Roll away, trap, roll towards. I'm going to continue that process over and over and over again until I get down. Until I just have a, a few inches of length on my tails. At which time I'll process another leaf down. And I will splice that in. All right? And I'll show that process once I get down here. So again, I'm twisting away. And this is uh, this cordage isn't too bad on your fingers, twisted dry. That can be another reason to a wet cordage. Um, make it a little bit easier on your fingers to twist. If it's very rough cordage, this isn't too bad. So you can see very quickly, we get a uh, nice piece of uh, cordage there. And you can see the, the twist in that, All right? So very, very strong. And now I have I have a, a couple lengths of cordage towards the tail end here. All right, at which time I'll process another leaf. Grab another one here, my knife, 
trim that off the end process this down and I'm showing this real time processing it down because it doesn't take a lot of time to process this and make uh, make cordage um, wasn't really uh, shown in, in very uh, good detail or at all even in my opinion uh, on the show the beast I made hundreds of feet of cordage in 30 days that I spent up in Great Slave Lake and uh, they didn't capture it near to the extent or the usefulness of the cordage I, I made, but uh, that's okay. That's TV, right? Um, so I have these lengths here and I have what I just processed. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna look at this uh, from the context of long and short. So say, we'll say this is my long side and this is my short side. I have this uh, piece here. Uh, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay this in for the splice and I may not want to lay all of this in to maintain this diameter I may just take a few pieces out and I'm going to since this is the long side I'm going to lay the short side right with the long side here all right and then I'm going to lay the long side with the short side and what that ensures is I'm just going to place that right on top all right so now I have that piece that I laid in there I put the shorter side of it in there and I created a longer side down here now with that extra piece. And it's just fit right there in the joint. All right, now I'm gonna take all that in the joint, I'm gonna roll it away, grab what's underneath and twist towards. And I'm gonna continue that process again and we have that splice. Now, the reason we offset that splice and do the long and the short technique is so that splice is carried over several inches of the twist here and it carries the load and increases the tensile strength of the cordage you're working with. If had I spliced directly across, you know, same, same, right? Even, uh, then that splice would be, would stop exactly at the same spot in the cordage. Therefore, uh, making that one exact spot the weak point in the splice. Whereas by doing it this way, my splice is carried over several inches, therefore, it's gonna be a stronger splice and a stronger joint as I use that. You can see there's my joint, a little bit of diameter change here as I continue down. But again, not all that important on diameter uh, for this application, which is, you know, I'm just making a um, an actual a piece of cordage here to, to tie, you know, maybe tie a, a backpack up or uh, something uh, of that sort. I'm not using it as a bowstring, which I, I truly would want to be uh, uniformly uh, in the same diameter all the way down for knocking of the arrow. So, a um, little cordage class there this morning, early morning cordage class for, call it Survival Sunday, I guess. Uh, hope everybody has a great day. Have a good one.